Hey everyone, Come Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Justin Rogers, uh, who is in fact wearing a Hartford Whalers sweatshirt. Justin. James James Ahedabo knew it was up. <laughs> how, how, how do you have a Hartford Whalers sweatshirt? You know, I don't know. I uh, I dug through the closet today, <laughs> tried to find something I haven't worn in a long time. <laughs> this, this was the selection. Uh, Nick Fairley probably has to go out and buy some new sweatshirts after uh, he showed up today returned to the practice field 290 pounds i mean he looked he looked good from afar we saw him in the locker room and i, I mean you made the comment in the locker room justin he looks like a defensive end he's in such good shape yeah he, he looks fantastic he's he's dropped what about 15 pounds since since training camp yep uh it's the lightest he's been since since auburn yep and uh yeah he looks like he played defensive end in four three uh three four we know yeah. how explosive he is but um uh, I guess that's the question: is is how much is that explosion back? How close is yeah. he actually uh, to to returning to action beyond just a limited participation in practice? Right, and that is the prevailing question: is you know we saw him today, but he was limited. Can he play Sunday against Dallas? I think the most likely scenario is that he can play a full complement in two weeks, provided the Lions win, obviously, and play against the Seahawks in the second round. As for this weekend, I do think it's possible he sees the field, but if he does, don't have high expectations for him. He's, he's not in game shape at this point. He's taken uh, two months off. Uh, it would be in a complimentary, complimentary role, uh, 10 snaps at the most, I think. If, if he sees the field, he would definitely be a reserve behind Sue and, and C.J. Mosley. But even that much, Justin, I think would be possibly enough to make a difference against a team that does have three first-rounders in the offensive line and does have DeMarco Murray. You know, I, I'm sticking to what Caldwell said uh, earlier this week and, and Tara Lawson start off with that it, it'll be a miracle for him to see the field. I, I just don't think it happens this week. Uh, Austin said if, if he could play even five to seven plays, they would they would definitely consider having him just because he's such an impactful player, uh, particularly on the pass rush. Yeah. But it just seems like a bad idea given how, how long he's been out. Uh, you know, I don't know exactly where the knee is, but limited today, very limited window to practice. Uh, I think this is more of a move to, to see if he can be ready for Seattle if, if the Lions are able to escape yeah. Dallas with a victory. And I think it does, it plants a little bit of that competitive advantage type uh, situation with, with Dallas. It's just another thing they have to think about. It might only be 15 minutes or a half hour or an hour of their prep of the week or something, but it does just give them something else to think about. Um, and in a game where every single play could make or break your season, possibly, oh, why not? You know, throw him out there, and it's again, it's mostly possible he plays against Seattle. I, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't rule it out. I think at this point he could play a few snaps against Dallas just to throw him out there, see what he can do. And, and he's such a freak athlete; everyone talks about it. But for a guy that big to move that fast, you just never know what kind of play he could provide you. Tony Romo said they weren't even preparing differently when they knew and Sue was out. I don't buy that for a second. But, uh, you know, it sounds like you, you do believe in miracles. I know Austin was asked if he believed in miracles, and, and he shot a coy smile and said absolutely. So, uh, you know, they, they've they left this door open. I'm, I'm not buying it. Uh, Kyle is a little bit, you know, I guess. We'll, I'm saying it's possible. It, yeah, well, I you mean, any, anything is possible. I mean, he, he's yeah. out on the field, so, you know, the, the, the door is open. But uh, I, I think you should be prepared for another week of, of Andre Fluel and C.J. Mosley. <laughs> We uh, we talked a lot about Nick Fairley today, but we also saw Terrell Austin, Justin, and uh, you know he's had he's done such a great job with the Lions this year, taking a, a defense with basically basically the same personnel as last year and taking it from 16th in the league to second in the league, and that's really been the the bedrock of this team this year. The, you know, the 11 wins, it's certainly not as a result of the offense. It's it's what he's done with that defense, um, and obviously good things happen to, to people who do good things, and and so uh, Austin is being talked about as a head coaching candidate. Um, there's been requests from the 49ers and the Falcons, what do you make of that situation? And, and do you, I mean, do you, do you think he's a legitimate candidate for one of those jobs? Yeah, you know, if you would ask me mid-season, I would have told you no. I, I I just think it's it's so rare in this league to to have just one year of success at a coordinator position and to get a job. It's not unprecedented. We obviously the big example everyone throws around is Mike Tomlin, and it's a great example. Uh, but as the season's gone on and they've continued to perform. Uh, Austin carries himself tremendously well. I mean, if you you watch this guy in the press conference, he he, he has such confidence. He he looks great, and sounds like a head coach. He he absolutely does. And yeah. so, with with the attention he's generating, the the number of jobs out there, I, I think he's very much a legitimate candidate. I I, I like the the fit in San Francisco a lot. Uh, to go from from Harbaugh and and some kind of the grading personality issues they had out there with him to to Austin, who has a lot of, of Caldwell in him. He's a bit more of an intense individual, but you know, a, a very much a people person um, while continuing the defensive continuity of, uh, you know, they're a great defensive yep. team. He's a great defensive coach. 3-4 there, which is his preferred scheme. Uh, it's, it's, a, 
it's a pretty interesting fit. It's interesting to me in, in football when there's when there are coaching searches and, and uh, change, how often the team a team hires somebody who in personality is very much the opposite of his predecessor. Yeah. It happens all the time. I call it the ex-girlfriend effect. You break up with a girl, like as a guy, like I break up with a girlfriend. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, the things that annoyed me from before are things I'm going to look for as a strength in the future, right? You, you just go, you go to that opposite sure. personality and that happens with football uh, coaching changes all the time. Look at Jim Schwartz, great in personality, uh, very polarizing, very, very fiery, um, up and down. I mean, almost, almost bipolar sometimes in his mindset or attitude of practice. And now you got Jim Caldwell, who's the opposite in every way, very steady. And you look at the 49ers job. I mean, Harbaugh was, did have that grading personality, very caustic, very, uh, just rub people the wrong way sometimes, intensely competitive. Austin's kind of the opposite way. I mean, if they're looking for someone who's going to build bridges to the front office and, and, and make uh, make life easy for people, Austin could make uh, a lot of sense for them. Um, at the end of the day, I think it's most likely Austin's back with the Lions. I think one year is, is just not enough. I think teams will want to see more out of Austin before they hand over the reins to the organization. But he's a legitimate candidate. And as you mentioned, Justin, I, I just he carries himself in such a way around this building. Players really respect him, his knowledge of the game, his personality. It's definitely, I think, in the cards for him at, at some point. Yeah, I mean, he, he has the trait that I think you want most in head coach, that he takes the talent he has and finds a way to put them in the best positions to succeed. Obviously, we're talking about Linehan this week, and and that was one of Scott Linehan's greatest strengths, was he knew how to maximize strengths and hide weaknesses. That's what great coaches do. They can fit parts into their scheme as opposed to you know forcing square pegs into round holes, um, which I think we saw a lot with, with Schwartz. So um, he's qualified. You know, I, th- I think there's some questioning about how he would staff up uh, a, a full staff. It's something he said he hasn't given a lot of thought to, and um, that that process sometimes takes some time. But uh, I think Terrell Austin, when when and if he ever gets that opportunity, will be a very good head coach. That's what we got from the Lions today. Um, one more day of practice on Friday before that game down in Dallas on Sunday against the Cowboys. For Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Mikey. We are M Live. Keep it right here.